All right, let's on to the next video. All right, here we go. Example number two, given the function g of x is equal to 3x squared minus 9x. Find g at 3 and find g inverse at 12. So let's do the first one. What does g at 3 mean? Well, I want you to use the g function and replace x with 3. Here's our g function. Replace x with 3. So substitute x equals 3 every time you see an x. You do that. And you get 3 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3. All right. And then you just type that into your calculator and you end up with 0. 3 times 3 squared is 3 times 9 minus 9 times 3, which gives you 0. All right. Pretty straightforward. What about the next one? What is this saying, this g inverse of 12? Well, I want you to have the inverse and plug in x equals 12. Well, I want you to think about the definition of an inverse. What is this saying? Well, remember that this is the x of the inverse. This is the x of the inverse. What is that of the original? Well, if 12 is the x of the inverse, it is 12 is also the y of the original. Think about that. Oh, so now we replace this g at x with 12, and you get 12 is equal to the equation, just like that. Then what? You bring the 12 over, and you have, oh, look, a quadratic equal to 0. So we're going to solve for this. Some of you are thinking, let's use the quadratic formula. No. I want you to think of a faster way without using a quadratic formula. Well, the way to do it is to solve by factoring. Common factor the 3 out, folks. Then factor the inside. And you solve for x. So the values of x here is going to be 4 and negative 1. Note the way I wrote it. Just like in domain and range, we write in order from left to right or from down to up, lowest to highest. We do the same when we write the zeros. You should have done that last year, but this year it's going to be enforced. You need to make sure that you write them in order. It's not worth losing a communication mark because you haven't written the numbers in order. All right. Now looking at this question, it looks relatively straightforward and simple. Well, what would happen if, for example, we were looking for this question and you didn't recognize to do it this way? What might you have done? Well, what you might have done, okay, I'm just repeating all of this, folks. So again, here we have the inverse is equal to negative 1 and 4. That's we're implying that g of x equals 12, and that's how we did this. But what might we have done instead? Let's watch what happens. Let's erase all of this and start again. What might we have done? Well, what we could have done was find the inverse. Find the inverse equation first by switching the x and the y and completing the square afterwards. So this is what's happening here. So let's go over slowly how to complete the square. Switch the x and the y. Remove the 3 from everything that involves the variable y. Then you divide this 3 by 2 to get y minus 3 over 2, all squared. Then you subtract the outside number times the inside number, all squared, and then plus or minus any leftover, which there wasn't any. x is equal to 3. y minus 3 over 2 squared minus 27 over 4. Now some of you are going, wait, what did that happen there? Don't just wait. Be patient with me now, folks. Okay, getting too ha button happy here. So what happens? is that now we've completed the square. This number came from simplifying this here. 
And what do we do now? We need to solve for y to find the inverse equation. So slowly we're going to find the inverse equation. So you get, where did all of these numbers come from? Okay, so let's go slowly. Where did they come from? Well, I want you to see that this was originally, okay, just we're going to move a few steps back. What you're going to have is x over here plus 27 over 4. Everybody gets that. So we're going to move the minus 27 over 4 to this side, and then we're going to divide by 3. So we do that, and then this thing, this inside the bracket, x plus 27 over 4, this looks kind of ugly right now. And what we want to do is get this to have at least a common denominator. A common denominator is 4x plus 27 over 4. Okay, then we need to divide by 3. This divide by 3 means multiply by 1 third. That will give you 4x plus 27 over 12. And that's what we end up with equals y minus 3 over 2 all squared. What do we do now? Well, we take the square root, plus or minus, square root of 4x plus 27 over 12, and we end up with equals y minus 3 over 2. Then you take the minus 3 over 2, and we bring it to the other side, and that will give us, now what will that give us? Now some of you are thinking, that'll give us y. No, remember, y is originally g up here remember we had to switch them what is it's g when we switch them that y now became g inverse and that g inverse turns out to be 3 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 4x plus 27 over 12. well what happens now well, we want the g inverse of 12. So g inverse of 12 is going to be 3 over 2 plus or minus 4 times 12 plus 27 over 12. What is 4 times 12 plus 27 over 12? It's 75 over 12. 75 over 12 reduced is going to be 25 over 4. Now think about it. What is the square root of 25 and what is the square root of 4? You can reduce this fraction. So it will turn itself into 3 over 2 plus or minus 5 over 2. Well folks, 3 plus 5, one more time, 3 plus 5 is going to be 8 over 2. What does that give you? That gives you 4. 3 minus 5 over 2 is going to give you negative 2 over 2. So that you have negative 1 and 4. And remember, in the previous question that we had, you know, in the way we solved this previously, we found out that the x value, the x values were these, that we found the easier way, the previous way. All right, so there are two ways to solve the one problem. Hopefully you understand this. Come and see me if you need some more work. Try some homework. See me if you need help. Take care. Have a good night.